So you have been asked to build a histogram or a probability distribution or a relative frequency distribution, which are really three different ways of saying the same thing, but you're not sure how to do it. We're going to tackle how to do exactly that using Excel in this particular how-to. So to begin, I will start off in my Blackboard course. I will download this particular data set related to Kentucky County information. And once the file downloads, I'll go ahead and open it up. So as you can see, what we're looking he at here is a data set related to the, all of the counties in Kentucky and a few factors related to each of these counties in the particular year this data was gathered. Now to begin, we're going to go ahead and pick one of these particular variables. I'm going to choose median household income. And I'm going to isolate this particular column from the rest of the, of the data by copying it. Uh, in order to copy it, what I did was uh, hit the button uh, for the column labeled B, and that selected all of the data in that column. I then hit Control C to copy the data. Once I get into the new sheet, I can highlight the entire column for A or B and hit Control V and that will paste all of the data that I've just copied. So this is the variable of interest and uh, you may be working with a different variable, most likely you are, uh, but the process will be the same regardless of what variable you're working with. So in order to get an idea of the range, which will become important in a moment, uh, the best way to do that is to sort the data. Once again, you can select the entire column. Um, by going to the Data tab, the Sort option will become visible. Go ahead and hit the Sort button. Now, as you can see uh, in this window, the My Data Has Headers window option is clicked. If you unhighlight that or uncheck it, uh, then it's going to include the label at the top of the data as an observation and it will sort it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reselect that. And it's saying that what we're going to do here is we're going to sort median household income, we're going to sort on values, and we're going to sort smallest to largest. Now, just to mention this, you would never want to sort one column in a group of data uh, like we have on the in the data tab. You would instead need to highlight all of the data in order to sort by any of the particular columns. But since we've isolated this data, our original data set will remain intact, and uh, there's no need for us to worry about disrupting the links between median household income and the county identities in the original data set. I'll go ahead and hit OK. And now we can see clearly that median household income in Kentucky counties in this particular year ranged from 15,805 to 63,229. That gives us quite a bit of information, but we would like to have a better idea of where these counties lie and what the distribution of median household incomes looks like between counties. And so in order to do that, we're going to go ahead and build a histogram. To build a histogram, we will need bins. The word bin here is, is referring to almost like an inventory bin where things are stored. Uh, what Excel is going to do is it's going to look through all of the observations in this column and it is going to count the observations that fall within the bin widths that we establish. And so for this particular data set, I think an appropriate bin since we start at 15,805 and end at 63,229, an appropriate bin width would be $1,000. And what we will do is we'll start at 14,000 so that we have a zero observation bin to start things off. Now, Excel is pretty smart, and a lot of the times it will do this correctly, so we'll see if it will go ahead and count by thousands for us. And we want it to count to about 64,000. So we can get rid of all of these. Once again, we go beyond the maximum so that we can get a nice zero observation bin to wrap up our graph.
So now here we have it. We have the data copied from the original data source, and we've got bins established, which will help Excel count observations. The next step is to go ahead and have Excel perform, or compile rather, a histogram for us. And the uh, tool to do that is located under the Data tab and in the Data Analysis pack. If your Data tab does not have a Data Analysis button, that will need to be added on. It is an add-on. It does not come preloaded into Microsoft Excel 2003, 2007, or 2010. Uh, there is a video on the same channel that will show you how to do exactly that. So here we are under Data Analysis, and we're going to select the Histogram option and say OK. Now it's asking for input. The input range is the data of interest. I will go ahead and hit that button, which will then let me select all of the median household incomes. In order to select all of those as quickly as I did, the buttons that I hit were, well, to begin with, I selected the label and hit Control shift down and that tells Excel that you want to highlight all the continuous data to the bottom. I will then hit the button, which will take me back to the histogram menu, and I will hit the button, which will allow me to input the bin range. Hitting Control Home will take me to the top left corner of the sheet. I will then go to the bin title and hit Control Shift Down. And returning to the histogram menu, I will now indicate the fact that the first row of data is actually composed of labels. Once I've done that and selected where I want my output to go, I always have the output go to a new worksheet. I will hit OK. And in just that amount of time, Microsoft Excel has gone in and counted the number of observations that fall into each bin. So we had zero observations or counties that had a median household income at 14,000 or below and we had zero observations that fell between 14,000 and 15,000. We did have one county which had a median household income that fell between 15,000 and 16,000. What I will do is go ahead and delete this top one. Uh, it's great to start off with a zero observation bin, but there's no need for two at the bottom or top. Uh, as we can see here, there was one observation that had a median household income, that is one county that had a median household income between 63,000 and 64,000, and there were none, that is there were no counties whose income did not fall in any of our bins. Having the word more here or any words in your graph uh, input will cause problems. What I'll go ahead and do here is to insert an additional bin with zero observations, which will close out the graph nicely. And I'm going to delete this non-numerical input so that it doesn't cause me problems in the future, which it will um, if you leave it there and then end up selecting it for your graph. 